It's a high raw life coming at you with episode three. Mm-hmm. And what's different about this set today? Well, I will tell you. It's dark in here because it's nighttime. Why is it nighttime? Making dinner. Pretty much already prepared. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it because I think that this is a really fun thing to do and it is a really good way to introduce all kinds of vegetables to the family. So first I'm going to tell you all about what our meal is. Tonight is the salad bar night. And uh, yes, yeah, Zoe? I want a crouton. Okay, go ahead and have a crouton. So um, with the salad bar night, it reminds us when we used to go to the salad bar restaurants in California and they were so fun, you could put whatever you want on your plate. So I sort of recreated that and we used to do it in the summer, you know, once a week or so. But it's freezing here, icy tundra, and I kind of forgot all about it. Um, but here it is, salad bar night. I'm very excited. I'm going to tell you some of the things that we have, and uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about the preparation. Some homegrown sprouts. As you know, I do sprouts at home, so those are some of my alfalfas. Pickles, cherry tomatoes, mushrooms, defrosted peas and corn. Um, so not from a can. You don't want them from a can because they're so processed that way. Uh, this is interesting. I've got some parsnips. Cucumbers, carrots, chickpeas, olives, and also another one, turnip. And why do I sneak in weird things like parsnip and turnip? Well, when they are shaved down or spiralized, they taste really good when you throw them in a salad. And then somebody might accidentally put some on their plate and try it. (gasps) Got some colored peppers, some red onions, some snap peas, and one of my favorites, not many other people like this, but I love beets. I like them all kinds of ways, but just raw spiralized beets or sliced really thin. Then I've got lettuce and purple cabbage. And um, I've got some sprouted green bread out. So if anybody would like that with a little olive oil. And then my flax crackers, my really yummy ones with the cracked pepper. Mmm, I'm totally sprinkling those on my salad. And then I try to live high raw. I don't force it on everybody, but I try to present it. So I have a little tray over here that I hopefully will not be indulging in. I think I'll have enough goodies that I won't want to. But for the kids to put on their salad and the hubby, I've got some Parmesan cheese, some shredded cheddar cheese, some feta cheese, croutons, and some French onions that um, Alex brought home a couple months ago and we never opened. And then dressing-wise, I have some olive oil. I have some Asian dressing that I love to make. I'll have to do an episode with that dressing because it's really good. And then two others are just in the bottom of the fridge. I don't want to waste them. I cut them out if anyone wants them. Great. Yeah, this is, it's a little bit of work to prepare all this, to put everything in a container. But we're not going to eat all of this. When dinner's over, I'm going to throw on the lid and put it in the fridge. And then for the next three days or more, I've got salad prep already ready. The only thing I'll have to do is rip up some lettuce, and I've got all of these things prepared. And it's great for me because midday during lunch, I could just pull a couple containers out and chow down. So, um, did I use anything fancy? I have some fun appliances that I use, but nothing expensive. Peeler, everyone's got those. Nice. I hope you have one of those. My spiralizer, you have seen me use this to make zucchini pasta. Um, I used it on the parsnip and the beets to make those spaghetti like and then on the turnip I used the other blade. I paid fifteen dollars for this on eBay. I think I've seen it in a store or on on a website for thirty. I don't know why. Maybe it's different, maybe it's a cheaper version. Works for me. The other thing that is so cool is this mandolin. I've seen in various and sundry fancy uh, kitchen gadget stores mandolins in upwards of $100 or more. I'm not exactly sure what's so special about those. Maybe the blade is from Japan or Germany or, you know, somewhere. But I got this plastic mandolin, la, 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 with these blades, so you can make different things. I don't know, seven years ago maybe, I paid $4 for it at Ross for Less. I don't know if that store still exists, but it was kind of like a Marshalls or something. And yeah, $4. And this thing is fantastic. So I did the carrots on it to make little circles so they're cute and people want them. That's good. And um, I don't know. I just want to say I was talking to another mom today who was concerned that her child didn't eat fruits or vegetables. 
Then, without preaching and, or anything, I mentioned how we make smoothies and put some green vegetables in the smoothie. And I did mention how if you put out different things for a salad bar, even if they don't eat the thing, they might just put it on the, their plate for the fun of putting it on their plate. And maybe the third, fourth time you put it out there, maybe not. I have a couple of kids who maybe not. But anyway, so that's it. I hope the lighting in here is good. And um, we're going to have such a yummy salad. I'm going to use a bowl like that big. I'm really, I'm ready. I'm pretty hungry. What are you going to put on your salad? Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. Your tongue. Are you going to put some lettuce? No. What? No. A little bit? No. How about, I bet you'll put some olives and chickpeas. Yeah? How about these onions? They're pretty pungent. No. You smell that? Uh, <laughs> not good. Well, thank you for watching. It's a high raw life tonight. And tomorrow, uh, we're going to be making Zoe's favorite morning green smoothie. So I hope uh, you'll come back and see us again. Bye. Do, 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 do